Now I'm going to show you how it can be done uh, very quickly on, let's say, a simple uh, <coughs> tool like Microsoft Excel. So we put the um, <coughs> points there, right? So this is my strain. This is the stress data. So I, I have a model. My model is going to look something like this. So um, what I'm going to do is to um, uh, write down the formula equals it's A times uh, exponential K times X. X is this value here. Okay. Minus exponential K. All right. <coughs> so this is uh, um, <coughs> my model if A and K take those values. And then what I can do is I'm going to copy this down. And you find that at the moment, my model is very bad. It's like that. Whereas the data is like that. Okay? So obviously, I need to make some changes to the uh, values of A and K. This empirical modeling. I've got parameters that I need to um, estimate. So what I can do is to <coughs> perhaps find the square of the error. In this case, I define the error as the difference between the data value and my model value. All right, and I square that. Okay, and uh, copy this down. And at the bottom here, right at the bottom, is my uh, total sum. It's very, very large. So uh, what I can do is to try to minimize this. So on, on, on um, this particular software, I can uh, go to, I think, data tools, and there's a solver. So I use the... Uh, <coughs> Uh, machines um, solver to find a minimum value for this particular cell by changing values of those two cells. Okay, and I say solve. Okay, so this is my solution. You see, I get those values 0 0.007 and 5.26. And uh, let's see 0 0.007 and 5.26. So at least I confirmed that what I did many years ago was <laughs> correct. <laughs> okay. So this is uh, empirical uh, <coughs> modeling. <coughs> All right. Now, uh, for second example, actually there are many examples that uh, one can look for in simulation model, but. I chose this particular example called Chaos Game because I thought it was very interesting. I could have chosen a uh, game of live, random walk, and so on, but I thought that this is a, a nice thing to do at a conference like this. So uh, let us assume that we have a three-sided dice. Okay, we have a three-sided dice. I don't know how it looks like, but we have a three-sided dice. Okay, <clears throat> uh, And uh, we start with a triangle with a, a, a vertices, a, Defined by 1, 2, and 3. And I roll the dice. If the dice, uh, I, I start with a point P0, and if I roll the dice and it shows up 2, I'm going to draw a line from P0 to 2 and take the midpoint of that line and call this P1. So I've got this point and this point. And I repeat the process. I roll the dice again, and this time, let's say I have um, 1. The result is 1. Okay? So, uh, <coughs> So I draw a line from P1 to 1, to, to the vertex 1, find the midpoint, and that's my P2. And I do it one more time, you know, if I get P2. So you get the, you, you, you get the, the picture. Now, uh, the question is, what happens if uh, we do this many, many rounds, many times? What will happen? Uh, now, uh, one way to, 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 to see what will happen is to write a program to simulate. So that's a simulation model, because we have a set of rules. Right? The rules I've just told you about. And given the set of rules, I can get, get a machine to just walk through that set of rules many times because that's what the machine can do very well, doing something repeatedly many times. Okay? Where is it? Yeah, this one. So uh, Take my word for it that I wrote this macro inside there. Uh, I did not cheat, okay? So it is following that rules. So uh, for example, let me reset. I start with uh, the point there. You probably can't really see. You can, can see that point there. That's my starting point. 
Yeah, and I go next, next. Can you see um, uh, the points are filling out? Well, it's a little bit too slow to do this many times unless we want to stay here and miss our lunch. Um, we, I'll just do the next 500 points. And let me do another 500. Let me do another 500. Another 500. Another 500. So you see that if I go on doing this, is it, I'm, I'm actually doing nothing. It's the uh, computer uh, simulating uh, uh, a certain process. All right, so this is like a simulation model, if you like. All right, so eventually you get a picture like this, right? <coughs> okay, and um, we couldn't control the, uh, the rolling of the dice, it's random, right? So in fact, we have, we have moved from uh, something very chaotic, you can't predict, to uh, something that has order, and this is uh, uh, in this area called fractals. And, uh, and this is actually called the Sierpinski's gasket. And this is another uh, type of Sierpinski's gasket, <coughs> uh, which is uh, not a triangle, but in the shape of a square. Uh, so you may ask, uh, what's the use of this, other, other than looking very nice and everybody wowing and all that? <laughs> The Sierpinski's gasket has been used in the design of your antenna in your mobile phone because it's a very efficient way of um, packing everything in and yet robust. Can you see this is the inside of a typical mobile phone and that's your Sierpinski gasket. It's an antenna in your mobile phone. So without knowing it, uh, many of us are carrying a piece of mathematics and using it every day. <laughs> Uh, my third example, which is also more relevant to um, uh, the H2, H3 mathematics, is on a disease outbreak. Uh, a very simple uh, model for a communicable disease uh, goes like this. Okay? It's called the SI model, or the susceptible infected model. We have a healthy susceptible individual um, becoming infected or an infectious Infected means you have the disease. Infectious means you are able to transmit the disease to someone else. Okay? So uh, this is a very simple um, uh, model. We call it the SI model. And uh, the model can be written in this form, and I think many of you will recognize that this is nothing but the logistic equation. Okay? And in the logistic equation, basically uh, you have a, a X here, which represents the number of infected. And actually this term roughly uh, gives us the idea of the number of uninfected or healthy individuals. And when you multiply two uh, entities like this in, in, a, in a rate equation, you are basically saying that there is some kind of mass action interaction between the two. <coughs> um, and uh, <coughs> the solution for this particular uh, model is given by this uh, expression here, where S0 is your... Um, uh, initial value of X at the beginning. Obviously, uh, if X not is zero, you don't have any infected individual at the beginning, um, you, you will not get any uh, infection outbreak later. All right? Now, we can apply this particular model to the SARS outbreak in Singapore in 2003. I'm not sure how many of you remember this uh, happening in, uh, five years ago. Uh, there were um, 206 cases uh, resulting in 31 deaths in Singapore, and the outbreak period was over a period of 70 days. Uh, uh, this is a, a data, this is a, in the open domain, uh, you can just download it from the net. Um, <clears throat> and those that, uh, gives, uh, you have the days starting from zero to I think it's 70, seven, something like that, about 70 days. And then uh, those are the number of uh, uh, infected individuals. <clears throat> and what we're trying to do here is to see if the logistic equation can be used to model the outbreak of SARS in Singapore in 2003 using this set of uh, data. So um, if I were to uh, plot the graph or the points for this set of data, it looks something like this. These are the actual uh, cases. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> So the logistic model gives us this particular uh, equation or solution. Um, the unknown here is actually your K. K is uh, what we call the transmission rate. 
Um, and in order to uh, estimate the transmission rate, again, we define some kind of uh, uh, average error. And in this particular case, I define the average error to be something like this, a square root of the sum of the squares of the difference between the model value and the data value, and then the whole thing divided by the number of data points. Uh, just now, uh, I showed you how we can use the uh, uh, solver feature in Microsoft Excel, for example, to estimate the uh, unknown parameters. Now we're going to do that again. So again, on, in, on the, um, I, have, I have a column of, of time, a column of the actual data, and now I'm going to key in the formula or the model in this case. The model is over here. All right, I'm going to write it down as uh, n is 206 equals 206 divided by, um, I have 1 plus um, 206 on x0. x0 is 1. That's my x0 here, 1. <coughs> so I'm going to write it down as 206 divided by 1, then minus 1, of course, I could have written 205, right? But, but <laughs> I'm writing, this, writing it this way um, intentionally because of what's going to happen later on. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> then multiply by 